This is a lecture by Barul Kalemi, narrated by Ungad Buttar. This is the second of three lectures on self-experiments. The objective of exercise diaries is to improve the patient's health. We plan to do so by increasing exercise. We accomplish this by understanding better the causes and constraints that operate on exercise. The diary tracks our reasons for exercise and helps us understand which ones keep coming back and which ones occur rarely. In the end, we understand how various events in our lives affect our exercise patterns. In essence, we would be conducting self-experiments. We would collect data from the diary and analyze it to understand what is causing us to exercise and what is preventing us from exercising. Then, we would change our world and see if removing the exercise constraints could help. We would see if what makes us exercise stays the same. Through these cycles of analysis and understanding, we gain new insights into our own behavior. Armed with this new insight, we can act wisely to improve the frequency of exercise in our lives. The steps we are asking you to do and undertake are relatively simple. Every two or three weeks, we ask you to sit down and list what you think are the causes and constraints of exercise for you. Then we ask you to keep a diary and list the presence of various causes and constraints and whether you exercise. We expect that you would make about 14 entries over a two or three week period. We will analyze this data and then let you know if there are reasons you have given are indeed by data from your diary. You, are, you keep doing this every two to three weeks until you come up and understand what makes you exercise and what prevents you from doing so. Perhaps three or four cycles are needed until you gain new insights into your exercise patterns. Here's an example of analysis of a diary data from one person. At the start of the study period, three reasons were given for exercise. One was bike, to bike to work, with the exception of rainy days. The second was to take showers at the gym. And the third was to sleep early in the hopes that one would be less tired and more willing to exercise the next day. This slide shows the client's diary. In the first page, we see a request from the client to list the causes and constraints that would be needed to be tracked over the next two weeks. The left column is written on the back page of the diary, so it is visible every day. This slide shows the daily page of the client's diary. This is page one of the diary. Page two and so on will replace the column to the left. The causes and constraints listed are visible from back of the diary on each day. The client marks presence of various causes and constraints and whether the client has exercised as planned. This data shows the resulting data from the client's diary. It shows data for 14 days and whether any one of the causes or constraints were present. For example, on day one, it rained and the client was planning to commute with a bike and did not exercise. The last column shows whether the client exercised or not. This data needs to be analyzed to see if it supports the client's assertion of what causes exercise. Now that we have very little data, there are only 14 data points. In statistics, data is often pooled across a sample of clients and as a consequence, when the sample data is large, there is sufficient data available to analyze the factors that affect exercise. Here the situation is different. The entire sample is from one case. There are only 14 data points. The methods of analysis must be adjusted to keep in mind the small sample size. We can do several things at once. Even before we carry out a more sophisticated analysis, First, if the client did not exercise at all or exercised every day. There is no variation in the observed pattern of exercise and we cannot determine what helps one exercise. 
Likewise, second, if there is a cause present in all time periods or not present in, at any time period, then we can throw this cause out of the analysis as it is not possible to estimate its influence. A cursory review of the diary data should enable us to make some obvious statements about the lack of variation in either the exercise or presence of causes. Please use the course website to ask a question and rate this lecture. The next part of this lecture will continue with a discussion of causal analysis.